somewhere in Central Europe. The alien force is on the move. These wood ants travel along orderly pathways in search of food. Their society numbers hundreds of thousands, and like a human city, it needs to be constantly supplied with food. But how do the ants find the food and organize the transport back to their colony? It may appear a confusing blur of activity, each ant doing its own thing, but it can't be. Somehow the ants coordinate their actions so that large insects are overwhelmed, killed and carried back to the base. However they do it, these ants are very successful. In one year, a single colony consumes over 10 million insects. In the background here we see one of these uh, fantastic nests of the uh, little mound-building wood ant in Europe. It's one of the very important ants in our forests because they are really protecting the forest from uh, forest pests. What's the ant's secret that makes them the most efficient predators on Earth, consuming more meat than lions, tigers and wolves combined? Bert Holdobler has been asking such questions ever since ants first enthralled him as a boy of seven. His fascination led him to professorships at Harvard University and the University of Würzburg in Germany. Along with American Edward Wilson, he has been deciphering the secret world of ants for over 60 years. The wood ants don't distinguish between professorial probings and the attack of a wild predator. They respond the same way. The workers squirt formic acid in their defense of the nest. The life of an individual ant is not important, but the survival of the colony is critical. In a way, the colony acts like a superorganism, a superorganism that can defend itself from all kinds of predators, including bears. The anthill contains 10,000 larvae and pupae. They are the future for the superorganism. But before the bear can reach its goal, it must face the squirting ants. They will defend the brood with their lives. The assault of acid up the nose and in the eyes persuades the bear to look elsewhere for a meal. The scent of honey attracts it to a nearby bee's nest. The bear faces a strong defense here too. The bees get the better of it. After smashing open the nest, the bear decides to leave. The exposed bee nest now faces a far fiercer enemy than the bear. The wood ants have discovered the hive. Though bigger, the bees are no match for the ants. They steal the honey and dismember the larvae. The adults are carried off with the rest of the plunder back to the ant city. The meat is destined for the ant larvae. The adult ants have a different diet. Their high energy lives are fueled by honeydew. This is excreted by aphids and is full of sugar and vitamins.
With this gift, the aphids buy the protection of the ants. The trade is on a grand scale, and in a year, the average colony of wood ants will consume 100 kilos of honeydew. This mutual relationship has been further refined here in the rainforests of Indonesia. The morning rush hour is already underway. The ants are off to the clusters of blossoms where their partners, this time mealybugs, are sucking the sweet plant juices. These tropical ants drink the honeydew as their wood ant relatives do, but they do more. They carry their partners to new parts of the plant where the sap is sweeter, just as humans herd their domestic animals to new pastures. The ants are nomads, moving with their domesticated mealybugs from plant to plant, always looking for fresh foliage for their stock. Only ants and humans keep domestic animals, and these ants in Indonesia are the finest example of animal shepherds, guarding and tending their flocks. The ants even coral their flock under large leaves when they sense the approach of a storm. How the ants detect rain long before it arrives is a mystery, but they do. As soon as the storm subsides, the ants are back at work, moving their herd. They take greatest care of the large black mealybugs. These are the mothers, and they are carried on the ants' heads. Smaller mealybugs are gripped by the ants' jaws and all the domestic animals returned to graze. This is a win-win situation. The mealybugs gain from better pastures and the ants have a guaranteed supply of sugar-rich food. And ants have evolved other mutually beneficial relationships. These are rare carnivorous plants in Borneo. Some of their leaves have been modified into flasks. Each pitcher contains a fluid below a slippery lip. They are a death trap for insects. The fluid digests the unfortunate insects that fall in. The nutrients from the corpses will promote the plant's growth. The scent of nectar attracts the victims, like this giant carpenter ant. But it is not the only ant. Tiny Campanotus ants actually live in the stems of the carnivorous plant. Whilst the giant ant is a visitor, these tiny ants have an intimate relationship with the plant.
The rim of the flask is one of the slickest surfaces in nature, and only these Camponotus ants can crawl around it. The giant ant doesn't have the smaller ant's marvellous powers of adhesion. It is in real danger. There is no way out from the death trap. The giant ant will slowly tire and then drown. The smaller ants now set to work. Unlike the giant ant, in fact uniquely amongst ants, they can swim underwater. More than that, they can survive in a flask of fluid that is slowly digesting the giant ant. The little ants use their unique talents to feast on the plant's victims. In return for their free food and lodgings, the ants defend the carnivorous plant from attack by herbivores. <laughs>